Hey, it's Respawn. A few weeks prior to launch, myself and a select group were able to jump into Crucible and test and discover what the third person team based shooter had to offer. In this guide, I'll be going over some of the game's basics, but also touching on some advanced strategies to help you play the game at a competitive level. So, let's get started. To start, Crucible isn't lacking in hero options. From tanky utilities to silent assassins and everything in between, you'd be hard pressed to oh, find bro. a hero that doesn't fit your playstyle. Here. Here I am. Each hunter, as they're called in Crucible, has a set of buffs, called essence upgrades, that are given to you as your round level increases. I'll touch more on round leveling later. When choosing your character, really pay attention to the buffs and choose the ones that you believe are going to be the most beneficial to your team during PvP. There are three game modes in Crucible at launch, Heart of the Hive, Alpha Hunters, and Harvest Command. In this guide, I'll be going over what I believe to be Crucible's main mode, Heart of the Hive. After being dropped into the round, a lot is going to be thrown at you at once. But what you need to focus on first is collecting essence. Essence is what drives your round level, seen in the bottom left corner of your HUD. The more essence you have, the higher your level. And each level is tied to the essence upgrades that you chose before the round started. As you just saw, there are native creatures to Crucible that when killed drop essence. The other and more effective way to get essence is by taking over harvesters. There are five harvesters on Crucible marked A through E, seen in the map. The way the game is currently, you need to be constantly checking your map to see which harvesters are enemy controlled or being captured. Hershey, I think it's as you get closer to the essence, they turn that yellow color. From further away, they're just blue. I just got a high latency here. <laughs> At this early stage in the round, the enemy has already taken over two harvesters. A good prediction would be that they have split into two teams. Either one player has broken off and they are split three and one, or they have split into two and two. Just by looking at who the enemy hunters are and their hunter level, we can predict the team landed near central, the Sazan, Shakiri, and Dakal, who are slower, medium to short range hunters, likely went north to capture B, while the level 21 at Jonah, has split off to take C and then head to E because the Ajona is a fast and stealthy medium to long range hunter who can operate for a short time alone. This allows us to begin to plan our rotation. In this instance, I felt the next rotation for Ajona would be to probe E while the rest of the team may head towards A or even start to push towards our newly capped D, bringing the bulk of the team closer to the hive. I'm gonna start going On towards canyons. Okay. Hey, I'm gonna too far right forward. Now. The main objective of Heart of the Hive is to be the first team to defeat and capture three Hive Hearts. Although the Hive has not appeared yet, my team has opted to stay on the west side of the map and head towards A to see if we can meet the enemy there and push them off the Harvester, gaining control assuming that they were coming from the north, all while farming more essence by killing more creatures. Staying more centralized, I put myself on farming duty while my team captures points. Another factor that should go into predicting enemy rotation is highly lucrative farm areas. These areas contain more creatures, resulting in more essence. On this map, I've included these areas. Spaceport, South Falls, Brado, Wetlands, and Crater. Need the harvesters. I'll farm. If you wanna, someone get harvester. You want me to head over? Uh, hey, uh, Being that they were met with no resistance at A, and another teammate was able to take C with no resistance, we now have to assume the entire team has moved together to E, 
and are now preparing to move to the hive, moving through D in a wide rotation. The next step would be to have one teammate attempt to take B and the rest fall back to the hive to begin fighting it while also holding off the enemy as they approach. And guys, this is just one tip on team movement and what map rotation and awareness should look like while playing Crucible at a competitive level. Got me is because I mean, he comes in to save somebody else that I've been fighting. Uh, they have one in the heart, right? I got bug on me too. Ready for Let's Toward roll. the end of the game, when your team is potentially on its last heart capture, things okay. can get pretty muddy. I need to make more of these trees. This is when communication and team utility is most important. Fighting off enemies will send them back to the respawn timer, where they will not be able to spawn close to the hive. This gives you more time as they will need to re-rotate to the area. Although the main focus is capturing the heart, keeping at least three teammates designated to getting eliminations on potentially uneven numbers while prioritizing the closest enemies to the hive is going to help you ensure your victory. It's important to note that a new hive will appear on the map every four minutes, making it possible to have more than one hive on the map at a time. This is why team coordination is so important. Although it isn't the case in this example, if your team takes too long to capture the heart, a new one will appear on the map, and if a portion of the enemy team can hold you from capturing the heart that you're on, a single enemy can potentially defeat the hive and secure the heart. Cover me, capturing the heart. As you're about to see, the only way to get someone off of a heart capture is to melee. This means the enemy will really need to make themselves vulnerable if they want to stop your cap. I might have it. Oh no, I won't. I need health. Is there health around here? At this point, we've captured two hearts, and our enemy has captured one. On the bottom left of my HUD, you'll see our essence levels at six. We've held enough harvesters and farmed enough essence, and now my team's chosen essence perks are all active. Had we come into this fight with a lower essence level, it may have made taking this final heart a bit harder. Cover me, capturing the heart. Bring up the shield. What the? F okay, Jesus Christ, dude. I got it. This is good. And bug super. We get it. All right, guys. So let's recap what to take away from this guide. Choose hunters and essence perks pre-game that complement your playstyle and your team's needs. Remember, essence perks can be changed up until the moment you drop into the map. Early games should be focused on farming essence by eliminating crucibles, wildlife, or capturing harvesters. Essence level helps win engagements, and those higher tier perks are going to come in handy. This next one I can't stress enough. Team communication and coordination is paramount, especially at a competitive level. By now hopefully you've figured out that each hunter is very different. From movement speed to attack distance, hunter knowledge will assist in the predicting of enemy rotations and attacks. And finally, when the hive has been defeated, but the enemy team is in the area, focus on getting at least one elimination prior to attempting to capture. This will result in even numbered firefights while one teammate goes for the capture. And that's going to do it for this Crucible Guide. Thank you so much to everyone who supported my channel so far. If you found this guide to be useful, hit that like button. If you want to stay up to date with more of my Crucible content, consider subscribing. As always guys, stay safe, and I'll see you in the next one.